talking about preseason, uh, Miles, you have played more games than all of us combined, probably. Decap, you have worked on a lot of it for for a long period of time, and Jeevan, you just like marksmen. Uh, so, so I, so, so I want to get <laughs> opinions. Fan, yeah. <laughs> so let's hop into preseason, right? But like, we're going to be more focused on the marksman update side of things, right? We have uh, whole new items. We have six reworks, and then honestly, some like rework styled changes for a lot of our characters, right? Tristana, Twitch, Ash, uh, more more than a couple here. So to kick things off, Decap, tell me what is the philosophy set down. Uh, kind of the carpet here for is why did we undertake Marksman as a big class to work on? Marksman was an important class for us to work on because we thought there was a lot of ways that we could differentiate the playing experience as a Marksman, playing with your Marksman on your team, playing against Marksman, because honestly, like right now, they just feel so similar in like all those ways, right? That they're yeah. gonna right click on you and you gotta try to stop them and you gotta try to help them. Nice. So we're trying to like amp up that and take it to the next level, being like, when I'm with Graves, I do this. When Quinn's on my team, she's going to be doing this. When I'm against them, how do I act, right? Yeah, they're, they're like the ranged Tamagotchis of League. It's just like, carry them around with you, feed them, make sure, and then I guess you win the game at some point. But we're not just doing the reworks as well, right? Uh, tell me a little bit about how the items kind of impact the marksman experience. So there's definitely a lot more choice now in the preseason. The way like competitive kind of trends is like there's kind of like a best option every time. At least now there's like these little micro decisions you kind of are able to make. You know, I want a long like long range siege weapon, so I go rapid fire cannon now, and like I want a little more wave clear, so now I get to go static shiv. Do you feel like that bears out, even like the context switching of things? There's a lot of choices you get to make each game, and while they might be similar choices fairly often, for, like depending on the champion you're playing, there's still always like a, a lot of thought you assign to it, right? when you do it. You're like, I probably need like a, a shiv here. But like the next game I could easily do something different and it wouldn't be that, that weird. The thing I'm most excited about actually is that the itemization shapes you to be really true to what being an ADC is. You are a glass cannon now. Like you're in there to fight. No cowards get to play ADC anymore. Don't buy a Banshee's Veil. Your last item, that's another Bloodthirster because you already have another BF Yo, item, right? Yeah, double Bloodthirster. And, and it's, it's just super exciting, right? It's like really visceral. It's it's fight the entire game. And, and you know, it, I, I think it feels really fun compared to last season ADC. Yeah, I think that one of the things that we did well in this season uh, from the from the item side is we made the items look a lot of fun. They're really interesting. And you can look at, like, I think if you're, like, theory crafting an AD carry build, you'd be like, what's my six item build going to look like? and all the items in it now actually look really cool, right? And yeah. they actually probably look like, are somewhat like reflective of your personal preferences as a player for that marksman, which is really really cool and very much intended by the guys that made the items. Yeah. Yeah. So, remember that patch we had with Lucian where he was 500 range and he dashed you every two seconds? We're like, we can't support that. Well, he's coming back in 522 and it's pretty cool. Yo, I love playing Lucian. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm I excited. Mean, for me, the most exciting change that I've been playing lately is definitely Lucian with Essence Reaver. And he has a lot of options where he goes, gets his zeal item, but with two items, he's literally at 30% CDR and his dash is on like a four or five second cooldown or less if you're getting right. your, what, your double What's so cool about right? that is that, that Lucian's like dash and his Q and, and his, and his uh, passive play really well together. But now he can he can like not have the crazy crit damage multiplier and, and still get to dash around, feel really awesome, and, and I think the experience of playing Lucian uh, gets better, and it's actually just much different, and it's what I think as a Lucian player you want to do and want to feel like. So are we, are we trying to make tanks sad? Are we trying to uh, make the marksman overpowered? Is, is Where do we kind of want the power balance in the game? We want to put um, agency back into marksmen in, in, such that they feel like you know they have a strong impact on whether the game is won or lost from the beginning of the game, right? Their actions like earlier in the game and especially like uh, their item synergies are taking off on like the the one and a half full items to, to two items. So they feel like they get to feel like a full character every game, right? It feels like we may be switching back to saying these are marksmen, these are the cannons of your team, and whether you go all in on trying to kill them with your Zeds and Rivens, or you go all in on trying to protect them or enable them, is actually kind of interesting, and, and uh, I'm excited to see it return. Are we anticipating people getting kind of left in the dust if this happens? So having the most powerful character on your team also be the most vulnerable enables a huge amount of classes to play. And then I think, like, you go full circle, it's like, well, there's a lot of Kog'Maz now because he's, he's wrecking faces, right? Okay, there's a lot of Zeds and LeBlancs. So what do we do with that? Well, 
Nautilus is going to be like at that Cogma side. You know, if you ever try to kill someone past the Nautilus, it doesn't happen. You go, <laughs> yeah. Boom, and you're just... stuck. So like tanks might be somewhat victimized by ADCs in this in this iteration, maybe, but they're also enabled in some sense too. Yeah. Quinn sounds like right next to Graves, those are the two most drastically changed champions here in the preseason. Uh and Quinn, I know, is a little contentious for players because she's losing her blind, right? And losing a lot of her assassination potential, but yet still seems to be really impactful as a roaming character, right? Right. Quinn was one of the really interesting ones for, for a lot of us because I think I'm super excited about Quinn. I think the new, the new version of her ult is awesome, but there were so many widely varying reports on how strong she was. And some of these guys aren't figured out yet, and I think that's really exciting. And I think that's kind of the thing with all the marksman changes is we wanted to... You know, emphasize the cool things about them, and I know a lot of Quinn players will say, "Well, you know, Quinn has all these cool things going for." Her. But we we did feel like Quinn does a lot of things about seventy percent of the way there, right? Mm -hmm. If she's on your team, she you can count on having a lane bully, sort of assassin, sort of duelist, sort of roaming, can't really team fight, falls off early, uh, eighty carry, right? Um, and while that wasn't necessarily unhealthy for the game, it didn't really tell a story of like what the character is going to try to do to win the game for your team, right? Right. You know, you can, you put more map pressure on the map constantly than anybody else in the game. Um, and we're hoping that we can really make that like come to light, right? I want to know a little bit more about Graves as well, uh, because his changes are perhaps the most drastic. He doesn't even feel like a true marksman anymore, actually. Right, I mean, you say the changes are so drastic. They are from the character you know, but they are not that drastic if you to ask someone, what does the shotgun guy in League of Legends do? And they didn't yeah. know what Graves was. They'd be like, all right, he shoots this like blast thing out, and he, you know, does it more, right? I think to some extent, this is what Graves players have really always wanted the most, besides the cigar, which is being true to the <laughs> <laughs> too soon. <laughs> which is being really that 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 dude who's really true. He's got true grit in his name, right? His passive. He he hangs in there. He gets close to you, and he blows your head off. And there's no truer version of that guy in League of Legends than this version of Graves. What's the dream? What's actually, what does good look like? How do we know when we've hit these goals? Because we're saying, oh, we want them to have the build diversity. We want you to like feel really good about picking your marksman. But how will we know when we meet that? I think that's kind of what we're aiming for with marksmen here. Is like, they're like a familiar breed of, of character, right? They're squishy. They're, they're not super most mobile thing ever. Um, they do a lot of damage, you, you try to kill them, right? But they all have this flavor now that they're bringing to the game, uh, and I think the players playing them have ways to express how they play those characters, uh, and what kind of play style they'll adopt you know, through their items, and how they're gonna win a game with the marksman, so it's cool. Yeah. I have choices that I make, and I felt good about those choices. My items felt like they empowered me. And to me, it's important that marksmen retain their weaknesses. They're still supposed to be glass cannons. They're still supposed to feel really, really impactful when they have items. They're still, still supposed to be relying on gold. And I don't think we would we would have a hard time seeing when that's off. I want to get you guys' kind of last hit on how you feel about marksmen in the preseason. Go for it. Essence Reaver and the joy of right clicking. Yeah. There you go. Honestly, for me as a player, I just really like experimenting with new play styles. Like with Twitch, now I'm like resetting like a Katarina and like repositioning and stealth, you know, and getting more flank options. And I think that's really cool because it feels like the character's opening up. Draven, you know, Draven's kind of like coming back because you have this option of rapid fire cannon. You can throw like a long range crit <laughs> just axe from and just forever like, away. Just like, yeah. Honestly, it just feels amazing to me. And also, like, it's just aesthetically, like, the different characters, Kog'Maw actually feels like a corrosive, like, void monster to play because you're just melting tanks. And I think, overall, that's a success. I think there's, like, sort of a double excitement going on because there's all these marksman changes, and marksmen are really popular, and they're in every game, you know? Uh, and there's the preseason changes, right? And they're, like, the highlight of them, right? So, like, I think bringing those together, I just... I honestly have no idea what to actually expect. Like, if you told me that, like, Graves was the strongest on the patch, like, everybody's kind of saying he will be, I'm like, yeah, that, that's possible. But if, if somehow Sivir was the strongest and just kind of came out of nowhere and took that, I'd, I'd just be like, okay. What if I told you that Kog'Ma was played only as a support in a solo lane against teams that took the Rift Herald? Please, no. I don't know. <laughs> 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 you'd, be, you'd be like, that's where I draw the line. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's just not, not going to happen.